Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out A Horse With No Name by America. Pretty simple song, possibly one of the easiest songs on guitar ever, depending on how you play it. There's something that I noticed when I was learning this song that is different to the way I've played it and the way that most people teach it as well, that's a little bit potentially a bit closer to the way it's actually done on the record, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. The basic idea is there's two chords for the whole song. So the first chord that you need is an E minor chord. You probably want to be using fingers two and three in the second fret on strings four and five. So open, second, second, open, open, open. Okay, that's an E minor. We've got one bar of E minor. The second chord the second finger is going to move to the thicker string and the third finger is going to move down a string onto the third string. So we'll end up having second fret, open, open, second fret, open, open. Now, most people when they play that, the second finger is going to lean over a little bit and mute the fifth string. So second fret, muted fifth string, open, second, open, open. And I actually think that sounds a little bit better. Okay, so, and again, it's one of those, I'm fairly sure on the record that's what's being played, not this. Just gets a bit muddy down there when you hear, have all of those notes. I think with the, with the fifth string muted, it just sounds a little clearer. So, the most, on the most basic level with strumming, just one strum per bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. E minor. And then with the fingers separated. Now, this one with the fingers separated, I guess you could call it a D6-9 with an F-sharp in the bass. It's kind of like, it could have a few different names. I think it's just E minor with the fingers moved in opposite, in opposing directions. That's kind of, but we'll call it D6 for now. It should be D6-9 with an F-sharp bass, but I'm just going to call it D6 just to keep things simple. So you'd have E minor. Two, three, four, D6, two, three, four, E minor. That, that would be the most basic strumming, and you could play along with the original recording doing that, literally. As part of the journey, I was looking at all the life. And you could just strum like that, make your way through the whole tune, and sound fine. If you're performing it that way, it might start to sound a little bit boring. So. The next kind of step up rhythmically would be to strum on the beat. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. As a part of the journey, I was looking at all the light. La, 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 la. Still not massively inspiring. So, Kind of the next thing that you want to think about, especially on a song with only two chords, is ways of varying it up. And probably at some point you might find that just strumming once per bar is actually the best choice, even if you can do more fancy strumming patterns. Okay? Now, the actual pattern on the record is different on each chord. And I'm going to take you through that as well. But a really nice kind of starting point for getting the rhythm a little bit more groovy is to go bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, down, up, bass, down, up. So for the bass, we're just playing the thicker string, or thicker strings, it's not just one string, it's just kind of a down pick focused on the thicker strings. Down, down, up. And this second down, up is more focused on the thinner strings. So one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and first part of the journey. So that would, I think, be a nice next step up. It's a little bit harder. So starting off just one strum per bar, then playing on the beat, then having a go at doing this little one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and getting used to having this sort of different pattern, particularly if you want to sing. It's You've got to automate the chords and the strumming if you want to sing along as well. So that should be something, again, that you want to spend a little bit of time working on. Now, the actual pattern on the record, it starts with this down, down, up, down, down, up. But when we go to the D6, we do down, up, up, 
up, down, up. Okay, so down on the bass strings, up, 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 down, up. One, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. If you're ever struggling with strumming, not just in this song, but in any song, I really recommend that you just get your fingers resting on the strings so they're muted and work on the pattern by itself. So one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up. Because if you're not able to do that, you're not going to be able to add it into the chords because the chords add more distraction. Your ears will kind of gravitate toward listening to that when they, you should really be focused on the rhythm by itself. Now, here's the little twist. When I was learning this tune, I noticed that actually there's a third chord. Controversial. It's not there all the time. There's quite a few layers of guitar. But one thing that you can really hear clearly if you listen to it, if you're familiar with the song, is there's E minor. D6. On beat three, you hear that low E note again, but most of the chord stays the same, and I'm pretty sure what's happening is second finger is moving back to its place originally with the E minor, while the third finger stays there. So you have E minor, fingers separate, one and two, and, and on beat three, second finger moves back to the fifth string and then you're going to play, actually you're going to play now on beat three just the bass string or the bass couple of strings and then it's the same. So one, two and three, four and one and two and three, four and one, two and three, four and one and two and three, four and When you move that second finger over and third finger stays where it was, it ends up making an E7 sus chord. That would be the name of that chord, E7 sus. So you have E minor, D6, E7 sus, E minor. Now, this is kind of famous for being a two chord song and you can definitely play E minor to D6 with an F sharp bass all of the way through the tune, sounds good. At various points in the song, that is definitely happening. But that having that low E in the second half of the second bar is definitely, that's for sure happening, particularly early in the song. If you listen to the song again now, you'll hear it popping in there on beat three. So again, all of these kind of beginner songs that I'm teaching, you want to pick the level for where you're at. If you're just starting on guitar, and this is one of the first songs that you've learned, just stick with the E minor to the D6 with an F sharp bass. You can impress your mates with the name of the chord as well. But it is, it's, you could think of it almost like a finger exercise of separating the second and third fingers and putting them back in the right place for the E minor. You know, and then experimenting with the rhythm, playing along with the original recording, making sure that you get your timing right, because timing is the key thing. If you fluff the chords up, people probably won't notice, but if you fluff the ry rhythm up, everyone will notice. So it's really, really, really important that you get the rhythm right. And playing along with the original recordings is one of the best ways of doing that, okay? So work on those two chords. If you wanna get really fussy, you might wanna have a look at adding in that third chord, but don't feel like you have to, it's not essential. You can definitely get away with playing this as a two chord song. People have been for the last 20 or 30 years. Remember that there are hundreds more lessons over on the website, all structured perfectly for beginners, okay? You can, in the songs part, you can select songs by chords that you know or how many chords are in the different songs. And if you're going through my beginners course, you'll find all of the perfect songs presented to you in order, along with the lessons on how to do your chords and how to do your strumming, how to hold your pick, how to play without a pick, and all of the other associated stuff the beginners might want to know. So I really hope you're enjoying that. Please hit that subscribe button if you dig what I do and hit the bell button if you want to be notified when I'm doing some of my live lessons as well. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.